For some, the search for knowledge leads to unlikely places. I came here on this quest looking for something, but what I came looking for was looking for me too. That is the case of Hermina Glass-Hill, a historian and writer who's made it her mission to elevate a story she says is seldom told, that of Susie Baker King-Taylor. Harriet Tubman I know, Sojourner Truth, Ida B. Wells I know, but I knew nothing of this incredible Susie Baker King-Taylor. Born into slavery in Liberty County, Taylor made her mark as a Civil War laundress, freedom-fighting nurse, teacher, activist, and even author of her own autobiography. Incredible feats unheard of during a time when women and African Americans were marginalized. She was a survivor. She went to Savannah at the age of uh, six years old, and her mother, her grandmother, Dolly, who was a washerwoman between here and Savannah, had these connections. So she learned how to read at one of those secret schools in Savannah. She utilized her knowledge to teach others. And by the age of 13, she escaped to freedom. And my interest came when I began researching the United States color troops. Uh, these are runaway men from southern plantations, free men from northern states who joined the Union Army uh, in 1862 and fought for freedom and liberation of black people. And in that discovery, I discovered that there were black women who participated, and I stumbled upon her autobiography, which was published in 1902. And uh, from there, this passion just grew. Before her introduction in that book, I knew nothing of her. Glass Hill is now on a mission to make sure everyone knows her name. So she's spearheading a campaign, speaking to area schools and traveling the country to bring more attention to Taylor's accomplishments. She even left her hometown of Atlanta last year to take up residence in Liberty County. The more I read about her, the more intrigued I became. And so uh, I came down here to speak last February for Black History Month. And in coming here, my husband and I went to the Isle of Wight where she was enslaved. She mentions that in her autobiography. And uh, I just started to walk the path that she might have taken. And uh, the more I walked, the more this spiritual presence came upon me and said, you should move to Midway. The Isle of Wight is also where Glass Hill finds inspiration. It's where Taylor is believed to have escaped to freedom, a major turning point that ultimately led to the liberation of others. Her skills uh, as uh, uh, in, in the underground schools were used uh, during the Civil War by the Union Army, and at that moment she became a teacher of hundreds of runaway children, men, women, who were illiterate. And so if we look exponentially in terms of her influence, the hundreds of uh, uh, escaped slaves, runaways, who learned how to read under her tutelage, and then they teaching their children, um, her influence is uh, invaluable. Now considered a premier scholar on Taylor's life, Glass Hill spends much of her time on research, scouring documents, even searching through cemeteries. Found some bakers uh, in, in this area who are potentially related to her. I found uh, a younger brother of Susie King Taylor at the Colonial Church uh, less than a mile away. And connecting the dots. And Miss Susie, so that's three from the bottom, so I counted three from the bottom here. And it's April the 18th, 1879. Uh, the date of the marriage is April 20th, 1879. And by whom married J.T.H. Waite, minister of the gospel. And we know that J.T.H. Waite was, a, was one of the ministers of our church. And that's how it, the connection was made. With the help of the local community, Glass Hill has made a few other discoveries. Susie King Taylor was a member of this church. Uh, its antecedent was uh, Midway Temple Presbyterian Church, which was located in the cemetery across the street. She was married. I have her marriage records. I have uh, the location of where her mother was uh, after the Civil War. With every revelation, Glass Hill says there's still mystery, but also an opportunity to learn and to grow. This is really about remembering, remembering her story, remembering the horrors of slavery, and using all of this as a flashpoint uh, for a galvanizing community around uh, 
preservation of African American history, African American culture, African American historic sites. Kim Gusby, WSAV News 3.